Okay, hey guys, uh, so this is gonna be another Unity tutorial. I wasn't planning on making more of these, but it seems like with the kind of recent like views on the first Unity tutorial I made, it seems like a lot of people really liked it. So I'm gonna try and make another one, and it's gonna just kind of continue off of essentially the same thing that the previous video did, which is the previous video is that I'm mentioning is the pass-through video, not the, uh, the code editor one. Um, I might make this like maybe a mini series. I'm not exactly sure what I want to do with it yet, but, uh, essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of just continue off of where that one left off and also just kind of maybe rectify a few things I mentioned in the first one that I might not have mentioned and, uh, might cause you guys some problems. So hopefully for the most part, you guys kind of take a lot away from this and it's pretty easy for you to understand. I'm going to try and make it as easy as possible. But uh, I'm going to do my best and just kind of continue off of it and kind of explain a little bit about what I'm going to do in this tutorial. So essentially what we're going to do is basically in the first video I had you guys just set up your pass through and you guys kind of just saw yourselves in your own room set up and whatnot. Uh, the second part of this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to instantiate like the prefabs that essentially Oculus gives you to kind of like scale your room into like some kind of a like a game space in a sense. And with that, what we're going to do is essentially show how pass through and like the Unity 3D objects can kind of interact. And then I'll show you guys kind of what the goal is long term, maybe like to how to make a game or how to make something out of this. And just to show you what I've learned and hopefully kind of share that knowledge with you guys. So without any further ado, I'll kind of get into what I was trying to show you guys. So first, a couple of things that I might have failed to mention in the first one. These checkboxes here are going to need to be checked. If you can't get your pass through to connect over your quest link or whatever it is you're using, uh, and if you're trying to do it in the editor especially, you need to have these things enabled as well, because if these aren't enabled, then it's just not going to work. So hopefully that helps. Just copy mine essentially here. You basically need everything checked. Uh, maybe do a quick restart after as well, maybe if, in case it doesn't work. Um, try restarting your computer and your headset and then go back to it again. Um, and then on top of that, uh, what I was going to mention was in the OVR camera rig, I changed the tracking origin type to stage. I just prefer this. Uh, it's a little bit easier to use. And then the anchor support as well. It's usually starts disabled. So I'm going to check that to be enabled. Um, and then essentially down here, I can't remember exactly in the first video what I had you guys set up, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to have the placement set up to be the underlay, the composition depth to be one, the opacity is always set to one. And then in here, we're just going to have this set to full white 255 for everything. Um, and that's pretty much it. It shouldn't be too much of a change from the first tutorial. And then on top of that, we're going to go into the build settings. And I'm going to show you guys really quick um, what you might need to change in here. So first thing you're probably going to want to do is change the minimum API level. Uh, and then just change that from whatever it is to API 29 and then set the target API level to be the automatically highest installed. Uh, the next thing you're going to want to do is change the scripting backend set IL, IL2 CPP. And then once you do that, it's probably going to give you an error because it's probably checked like this where you have arm V7 checked and uh, you just uncheck that and check 64. Um, that's pretty much it. You don't need to change anything with the input handling because we're not actually using any inputs yet. Um, we'll get to that stuff a bit later, but that's pretty much it for the most part. I'm also, uh, kind of casting my quest here as well. So you guys can kind of see it better. So hopefully that helps you a little bit. Um, but that's pretty much it. So without more delay in pre in the previous video, hopefully that kind of helps you guys with some of the problems you might've been having. Um, there's some other stuff we need to check here as well. So in the camera or under the OVR camera rig, you're going to want to look for the center eye anchor, and then you're going to want to look for the clear flag set to solid color. The background, you're going to want to be black essentially. So hexadecimal zero, everything's zero. And then the culling mask, you just want to set these to default, transparent, water, and UI, just because this is the only things we actually want the camera to render. Uh, that's pretty much it. In terms of the lighting and environment, I have everything turned off, so I have no skybox, I have no source light, nothing like that, just because it's a little bit easier to see the pass-through this way. So I have that all set up like that. Um, and that's pretty much it. So we'll get into kind of the actual part of the video I want to show you guys more. Um, so essentially what we're going to need to do is we're going to start by looking for something called a scene manager. 
So the OVR scene manager here, we essentially want to click and drag that into our scene. And if you look here, it's got a few places for prefabs. It's got some prefab overrides and advanced tab as well. You don't need to worry about the prefab overrides or the advanced prefab or the advanced tab. Uh, that's kind of not what we're going to get into. Uh, the main part of what we're going to get into is this plain prefab and this volume prefab. So if you look here and you type in the word spawnables, if I could spell, I can't spell, you'll see a spawnables plane and a spawnables volume. Now you can obviously see two other ones here that I've created, but you essentially want to drag the spawnables plane into here and the spawnables volume into the volume tab. So obviously it will look something like this. Now for me, I created a spawnables plane checker and the spawnables volume checker. Now just for this, I, the only reason I really did this is because I didn't want to use the base one that they give you from Oculus. I wanted to create my own just in case I wanted to make changes to these. So I didn't want to mess up any of the base prefab that, um, that they give you to work with. So it's just a little bit easier if you just essentially go back to your assets folder, you create a prefab, prefabs folder. And you essentially just copy and paste the spawnables plane and the spawnables volume. You could rename them to whatever you like. This is just what I chose, uh, just for a bit of easier use. So essentially you drag those into here and you have these two spots filled up. Now that's pretty much it for the most part. It's not as complicated as it sounds. It's pretty easy. Just make sure you have everything set here correctly, like I mentioned before. And we'll pretty much get into what it will look like. And I'll show you guys how it should work for the most part. It's not... Like I said, it's not too complicated to understand. Uh, and just make sure you have everything set up here correctly. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit play and then I'm going to go to my um, my cast here, essentially, where I'm showing you guys. Actually, I want to make it uh, widescreen. Um, where was that again? Um, OK, well, either way, I forget. So it's it's whatever. But uh, here's what I'm looking at, essentially. I'm not sure why it looks like that. I think I need to enable the, uh, the wider screen here. There we go. So you can see what I'm looking at. And uh, it's pretty much just a room set up here. It's just a box. Uh, it's pretty much what my room just looks like right now. It's a small room. Um, so it kind of looks like this. You can't really see the pass through. But if you go back to the Unity editor here, and uh, you go into the scene view, and if you just disable one of these boxes, Oh, do I have something set up wrong? Hang on, let me see. Oh, my, I think it's kind of bugging out a little bit for me. Let me just uh, restart it a little bit. Hang on. Sometimes it does that where the uh, path through becomes a little bit uh, distorted. I think I have a lot of things running on my computer right now. So hopefully uh, just a quick rebuild helps that. Uh, let me just see if that makes a difference. Uh, sorry about that. Um, so let's see if I disable this. Yeah, that's better. Okay. So I'll go back to the cast and now you can kind of just see my room. Uh, and there's my hands, uh, but you can also see like the wall is still there and it's on top of like your, your hands and stuff. So it's kind of what we're looking for. We're looking at something like this. This is kind of what we want. Um, so that's pretty much it for that. Uh, so the idea of what I'm going to show you guys, maybe what I might, uh, Uh, show you guys to do and maybe give like an idea of the concept I'm going for here is um, if we go into the view here do you see this cube I just created essentially what we're going to try and do is we're going to have this cube kind of like hidden by the environment it's kind of hard to show um, with so many tabs open <laughs> maybe if I do this on my second monitor hang on so I'll, I'll move this over and I'm just going to drag this cube around uh, and then if you see how it gets hidden by the like the wall there, essentially what we're going to want is like we're going to get rid of these walls, but we're going to still have them work as an ind invisible wall, I guess you could call it. And then the cube will kind of spawn into the view kind of like so. Um, it's kind of hard to explain. Maybe once we get there, it'll be a little bit easier for you guys to understand when you see it more in like in practice, I think, for the most part. But that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I'm going to just kind of stop it there. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't worry about this error, by the way. It's just telling you that you kind of switch things during your runtime. Uh, it doesn't really mean anything right now. But that's pretty much it for this video. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I'm going to try and make more of these if you guys really like them. So hopefully, um, if you guys do, I'd love the support. Um, 
I'm not doing this for any other reason other than the fact that I'm just trying to share some knowledge with you guys. So hopefully you guys liked it. Uh, let me know and I'll keep making them if you guys do. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys next time.